you, born into this world with virgin eyes and mind. The world grows larger every day through family, friends, sights, knowledge, love, loss. All is normal, all is right. It wasn't was fair. fair. The fair is in town, as it has been the 13 years prior. The smell is signature at most, with pretzels, funnel cakes, and the barns surrounding you. Lights almost as loud as the voices, both completely assaulting your senses. But that's okay. You came here with your parents to enjoy all of this. Even though it happens yearly, you always experience something new. It can't happen. It doesn't happen like this. They were there too, with the masses of people making an endless pool of faces. No one knew who they were, or cared. That was perfect for them. Nobody would care. Nobody would see. You weren't any more special to them than that kid a couple yards over. They didn't discriminate. No, that would be rude. You just happened to be at the right place at the right time. No! no. Go back, please! For them. Some came to them. Others, they picked up the goods themselves. You are the latter. No more of a choice than whatever food's on a shelf. You were right. It wasn't fair. It can't be. It never is. Your parents would save you, right? They would worry and notice your absence. Though, when will they notice? A few precious moments were all that was needed to take you away. They'd done it before. It was a simple process for them. Wouldn't someone have seen? Empathy is strong and memory is weak. The despair quickly overtakes hope. Your parents will make their best efforts, but no, some things aren't fair. This definitely isn't. It never is. A new experience was waiting. Whether you chose this or not was no longer a concern. You have no idea where you are at the time, the day, and that's just how they wanted it. They point you to a room in the back, trying to make this as easy as possible. You decline. This time, it is a demand. All formality gone. No, no stop! stop. I, don't I don't wanna go. go! Your persistent declination causes them to snap. They grab you as you fight their grasp. You fight and fight. Your attempts are futile as they throw you into the abyss. Your hands and knees find you at a corner where you hug yourself. It starts with one, two, then three. You slowly notice more and more, as they have already been studying you. Probably a runaway. Eleven years, maybe more. Damn, we're gonna be replaced by whatever that is. No, no, I have a name! Not anymore. You look up to speak, but your attention repulses anyone's curiosity. It's infinitely easier to just look away. Easier to ignore it. Maybe if you close your eyes hard enough, it will all go away. Your training started sometime after the light ceased to spill from the small window across the room. You were no longer somebody, but rather a piece of machinery that needed to be taught to produce revenue. The customer would use you for their own purposes at their own discretion. In return, they would give you money, which you would return weekly to your captor. It wasn't your money, it was theirs. You would simply give them a good experience, as they put it. You don't do anything unless they tell you. You couldn't do anything. You had nothing to do anything with. Your body, their body. What's the difference? Everything was lost that day. Your eyes and mind lost their light. You can't do anything. You aren't you anymore. You are an it. Welcome. It's been about seven years now. The routines were subconscious and skills perfected. It was about to be prime time for the pickings. You at the head of the group. Somewhere you absolutely despised to be. But you've tried everything to leave, only to find that this is exactly where you always end up. 
be it for food, money, or anything resembling shelter. You look around, seeing who to make a front for, moreover, looking for those willing to dish out. As you scope, you meet gazes with someone across the way. They don't look like your usual catch, but you've serviced everyone at this point. This person looks much nicer than anyone you usually trade glances with. Kinder. They aren't seeing you as a piece of meat, but a person. Your mind is hardwired to keeping presence, so you stand your ground, ready to lead with anyone who will waive their money. But they don't. They aren't completely accepting, but they tilt their head as if they're contemplating. Please, someone! You feel something stir inside of you. Something you've long since forgotten. Please! They just keep staring, and that's a waste of your time. You flip them the bird, hoping to fend them off. No, what are you doing? Money makes the world turn, and keeps you safe. They break glances and start their pace back up. You leave your post, something you rarely do. Angered. Just a glance glance wasn't enough. Why didn't they come save you years ago? Did they stop? Did they try? Where did they look? In asking yourself, you actually forget why you had stayed. It was so easily influenced on you that there was no choice to be made. This was all your fault and nobody else's. You chose to be here, or so your boss says. Yeah, I chose to be here because I had nowhere to go. You turn to see the bane of your existence. They proceed to ask you what just happened. You glare at them without response. You didn't choose to be here. They ask you again, even more forceful. You straighten up. You did not choose to be here. You look to the door. This would be it. Anything was better than this. Anything. No! Not anymore! You throw the strongest jab you could muster. That was a huge mistake. You quickly make for the door. He quickly catches you and spins you around. You weren't going to make it. Life isn't fair like that. They definitely weren't going to let you get away without a warning. Just a small one. On your shoulder. Just one. Days later, you return to your post against every fiber of your being. It's the only thing that is keeping them from killing you. You cradled your warning. It was only by their grace that you lived, or so they're telling you. It hurt so much. And then it appeared in front of you. It was a small slip of paper, nothing more. You look to see who it is attached to, and it's someone you've seen before. It was the person you flipped off a couple days ago, giving you the only thing you'd been searching for all these years. Help. You look down at the slip and find it has a hotline number on it. You take it, silently thanking this wonderful soul just by staring at the number. They continue on their way, leaving you be. You turn wishing to thank them, but you don't make chase. Deep down, there was nothing you could do to repay the miracle they handed to you. Thank you. You make the call, secretly. You could be seen by anyone. You didn't want to be seen, especially by them. The call is successful. New people, with the glance like that person had, arranged to come assist you. To free you. To save you. You who are no longer in it. You. Many years have passed. You've been reconnected with loved ones, recovering, and starting to speak out about your life. You put your phone away after having let the person on the other end know you loved them. As you pick your head up to meet the cityscape, you see me. Me. Withered, beaten, and discarded to the elements. You make haste towards my alley. My post. I instinctively flinch away from your attempt and flip you off. You remember doing so when you were first trained, first used. I just want you to go away. Close your eyes, anything. I don't exist, just let me be. No, help me. I warn 
morning became visible from my clothing. I'm hugging my left side, like you. And you do the most amazing thing, the most caring thing anyone could have done. You slowly shift your clothing and reveal your healed warning. You showed me what I was feeling inside. You gave me a hand, a heart. You looked at me. You showed a simple smile. You simply cared. You helped me. You.